What's this? New Cartoon Network series, Steven Universe? <laughs> yeah, right. I give it a season. I mean, it's not like I'm ever even gonna watch it. Nah, I'ma spend all my time on YouTube watching SourceFed. Now that's gonna last forever. Good luck, Stevie Planet or whatever you are. So, uh, yeah. A few things have changed. Hey there, I'm Fofi, and I'm a Steven Universe fan. If you watch my videos, you already know this. It's not only my favorite cartoon, but probably my favorite TV show, period. And at this point, I've talked about the history of how the show was made, and I've even recapped the entire series plot with some stupid drawings. I've spent a lot of time thinking about this show. But believe it or not, I wasn't always on board the Steven Universe train. I honestly used to think this show was, uh, well, we'll get to that in a minute, as I bring you some confessions of a Steven Universe fan. My personal thoughts, opinions, and experiences with this show that so many love, and so many hate. The good, the bad, and the... oof. And if you don't know what Steven Universe is... Why are you watching this, man? It's a show about space rock people who fight monsters and family issues. It's one of Cartoon Network's biggest hits, known for its unique characters, fantastic worlds, heavy focus on character development, and, of course, its awesome music. Like, not even just musical numbers, there are a surprising number of concerts in this show. And they get insane. I mean, look at this show. Who wouldn't love to go to a concert like this? Well, you might not be able to see alien fusions flying around while playing guitar, unless you go see Kiss, but there are still plenty of amazing live events out there. And hey, I just happen to know a great way to get tickets in literally the easiest way possible. That's right, guys. Today's video is sponsored by SeatGeek. I'm a regular David Dobrik right now. If you're anything like me, music is a huge part of your life, and there's nothing better than going to a good concert. I've been to tons of shows in my life, but no matter how many times I go see Paramore, buying tickets online always stresses me out a little bit. Well, SeatGeek is an app that takes that stress and hassle out of finding tickets to that My Chemical Romance reunion show that you definitely haven't been constantly dreaming about for a decade. SeatGeek searches all over the internet to make sure you get the best seats for the best price. They legit rate ticket listings so you know when you're getting a good deal or not, with red meaning a bad deal and green meaning a good deal. Or if you're a dog and you can't see color, they just give you a number score too, so that works. One of the things I love about the app is how they give you a first person view of the venue from the seats you're looking at. Another way to make sure you get the best seat. Cause let me tell you, I went to see a production of Phantom of the Opera once and no joke, I was stuck behind a freaking column for the whole show. Yeah, like a sitcom come to life. I could maybe see like, you know, 45% of what was happening on stage at any given time, and I know that wouldn't have happened with SeatGeek. So next time you wanna go see a band, comedian, musical, or sports, Thing, be sure to click the top link in the description or go to sg.app.link slash Fofi and use the code Fofi for $20 off your first order. Major thanks to SeatGeek for sponsoring this video. And with all that said, these are confessions of a Steven Universe fan. Not all Steven Universe fans, just the one and that one is me. Hi. So let's start with one of the big ones. I, Foot of a Ferret, used to be kind of a Steven Universe hater. I know, I know, what a betrayal to my brand. But see, I wasn't really paying attention to cable TV back when the show premiered in 2013. I did catch some ads for the show from time to time, and I remember thinking, wow, that sure looks like Adventure Time. Yeah, back then, I thought the show just looked like Cartoon Network trying to recreate the success of Adventure Time. I mean, I saw a human kid surrounded by magical creatures, fighting monsters, singing ukulele songs, and just generally being kind of wacky and quirky. And to me, that all screamed Adventure Time ripoff. Of course, back then, I didn't know the show's creator had worked on Adventure Time, or that Steven Universe had like a thousand different things that set it apart from Adventure Time. But Nah, make your entire judgment call based off a single commercial. That sounds good. And I mean, I guess I sort of get why I thought that, but it's definitely the kind of thing you say if you know absolutely nothing about Steven Universe, which I didn't, so checks out. And for years, I just walked around with this opinion in my head. This baseline, bare bones, and pretty inaccurate view of Steven Universe that wasn't even based on the show. No, it was based on the commercials. And things weren't really helped when I caught this ad for the first Steven Universe DVD. DVD, it's got 12 of my adventures. DVD, and a bonus special feature. DVD. 
Yeah, if my interest in watching Steven Universe was at a zero before, this commercial dropped it into the negatives. Mofi Steven Universe fan potential is in the red, people! Oh. God, I just remembered I even tweeted something about Steven Universe back in, like, 2015. Steven Universe comes off to me as a show trying too hard to be like Adventure Time. Not saying that's bad, though. <laughs> yeah, 2015 Fofi, way to make a totally stupid public statement on a show you've never even watched. Good going, I'm sure that'll age great. So, yeah, for the first few years of Steven Universe's life, I was that annoying guy who never watched the show but blindly hated it based on stupid misconceptions. But then one day I was lazing around in a hotel, nothing was on TV, so I just stuck it on Cartoon Network. And it just so happened there was a Steven Universe marathon on, specifically a marathon of all the Gem Fusion episodes. Oh yeah, Gems and Steven Universe Confuse. If you don't know the show, you wouldn't know that. But again, if you don't know the show, why are you watching a video? about the show that doesn't imply that it's gonna tell you what the show is. I don't know. I'm pretty sure the first episode of Steven Universe I ever saw was Cry For Help from season two. <laughs> Let me tell you, man, that is a weird place to jump in. I didn't even know these characters' names yet, and now they're all Dragon Ball fusing to make new characters with different names, different voices, different powers. What is happening? Where are we? What's this tower thing? Why do they have a lion? Why is it pink? Who's this Peridot person they keep talking about? And why do I get the feeling she's not actually gonna be a threat. But then the episode after that was The Answer. Not the answer to the questions I had, but the actual episode called The Answer. The one that finally fully explored Garnet's backstory. And as a standalone episode, yeah, there were still some things I didn't get, but this story of two gems fusing by accident and suddenly having their world turned on its head, it stuck out to me. I didn't really think much of it at the time, but it planted a little seed in my head that said this show might be worth checking out more. Several, several months later, I finally decided to start delving into the world of modern cartoons. The ones I missed out on because I got all caught up on YouTube in 2010. I don't know, I had animation on the brain and thought it'd be cool to maybe do some videos about cartoons. And of all the shows I could have started this mega, ultra, multi-binge with, I chose Steven Universe. And I gotta be honest, early Steven Universe, it's a little rough at least compared to what the show became. I mean, you can't just jump right out of the gate with toppling governments and singing about the death of a loved one. You gotta start things off easy, man, with a goofy episode about eating ice cream and rapping about ice cream. Okay, let me put it like this. Gem Glow is not my first choice of episode when I'm introducing a friend to Steven Universe. And some of those season one drawings, man, those get wonky. Anyway, I kept binging the first season and while I thought it was fine, I felt like I was missing something. What's so special about this show that's got everyone flipping out for it? But then I got to the episode So Many Birthdays. You know, the one where Steven begins rapidly aging and nearly dies of old age while the crystal gems just panic and cry. Uh, for the kids. Now this was the first time the show really made me sit up and go, oh, okay, this show ain't afraid to go there, all right. Not gonna lie, this episode was a little too real for what I was expecting, may have made it harder to get to sleep that night, but I was intrigued. And from there you had Ocean Gem, Alone Together, The Return, Jailbreak, all these super unique, more plot-driven episodes that really started to hook me onto the show. Now I was seeing what made Steven Universe so special. And then the whole Peridot Redemption arc hit, and that's when I finally decided, okay, yes, I love this show. <laughs> huh, what do you know? The show I blindly disliked turned out to be really good once I actually watched it. Who would have guessed? So you get it, I love Steven Universe, duh. But even I'll admit this show is not perfect by any means. I'm not saying it's some untouchable piece of art with no faults. I think the art and animation is great, but it can be kinda inconsistent at times. Characters can change size and proportion episode to episode. The pacing's all over the place. The show takes a frustrating number of hiatuses only to come back with a bunch of filler episodes, Ronaldo exists, and all of that is absolutely true and valid. But for the most part, none of it bothers me. Like, I'm not saying those aren't problems, and if you don't like the show for those reasons, then hey, I don't blame you. But for whatever reason, 
I don't mind. Well, except Ronaldo. We could kind of do without Ronaldo. Keep Beach City weird! Uh, oh. I don't know. Maybe it's because I jumped into the show super late and already had a huge backlog of episodes ready to binge, or maybe it's just my love of beach towns, but the filler episodes never bothered me. I like Beach City, and most of the characters in it. Yeah, of course I want to get on with the main story, but I also enjoy just chilling out and watching Steven, you know, assassinate the mayor. Let me put it like this. I'm the guy who would reset The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker every time you left the first island because I like relaxing on the beach and not worrying about problems and pirates are scary and giant birds are scary. Turn it off! But then there's Steven Universe, the movie. I've not talked about this much on the channel, but this movie was a huge deal to me because not only was it one of the best things the show had put out in years, but it created this moment where suddenly it felt like everyone was super super into Steven Universe, even people who didn't like it before or had fallen off with it. And a lot of that was thanks to probably the best thing to happen to Steven Universe in years, Spinel. This new character, her story, her awesome rubber hose character design, and her incredible intro song really resonated with people and she spread like wildfire. Fan art, song covers, and memes everywhere. This one new character elevated the movie to a level I never expected it to reach. My friends know I'm a Steven Universe guy. I don't do much to hide it. And after the movie came out, I got texts from two friends who I'd never heard talk about Steven Universe even once before, but both of them texted me on the same day just to be like, dude, the Steven Universe movie is so good. It was this brief moment where suddenly it felt like this show that's become so divisive over the years had this one thing that everyone came together and agreed was pretty cool. And I don't know, I thought that was really fun. Dare I say it was wholesome content. And at the end of the day, even with all the show's imperfections, that's really what keeps me coming back to Steven Universe. It's that wholesome mood the show has. Whenever an episode of Steven Universe starts, whether it's the biggest plot-driven fight the diamonds save the earth episode ever, or the 15th no stakes filler episode about Sadie Killer and the suspects, once the episode gets going, I'm just like, yeah. I like this. I feel good watching this. And really, that's all that matters. That is until Steven Universe Future started, and now every episode I feel like I'm watching a close friend have a mental breakdown, and now I'm just very, very, very concerned. That's it, that's the end.